Welcome in to the Thursday edition. We've almost got this boring week finished. So I thought I would take some boring time to talk about something that might be a little bit interesting. We're going to bring a new uh, a new entity into the podcast that I haven't talked about before. So let's catch up on a couple of things. First of all, the trading. I left this off yesterday saying I would let you know how the financial trading went under the void of course moon. Well, I talked to the guy that I'm working with on this and he said, yeah, we <laughs> in the financial markets, you don't look at void of course. I mean, they're trading whether it's going or not. And I figured just as much. And actually yesterday was a decent day. I wasn't able to look at it because I had other things going on. But uh, as I look back on it and the times that were picked by him to initiate trades, worked out okay. Now let's talk about today because we have the two things that we set up yesterday. First of all, the moon is moving into Pisces at 5.31 a.m. Eastern Time. And then six minutes later, the sun squares Neptune. So that's at 5.37. One of the things I've been seeing are people saying amplified dreams. Have you been having any amplified dreams, amplified visions, uh, intuitive prompts, kind of a knowing of like which direction you should go, just that instinct, that gut is amplified? Well, could be. Or like we set up yesterday, could it be the confusion side? Set your intentions and do your spiritual work around this because it is a very, very powerful aspect. Okay, let me bring something forward from the experience of narrating these audiobooks for Stephen Forrest, that he creates a theme of these slower-moving planets. So we're talking about Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And not only can you follow those through the course of your lifetime, so in other words, let's take Saturn, for example. That's the first one mentioned. Your first Saturn return. So Saturn takes 28 and a half years to go all the way around the circle. So when you're 28 and a half, Saturn is back at the position where it was when you were born. That's a very significant time. It's called the Saturn return. Second one happens when you're about 58 and a half, 59. Distinct changes can happen around those times. Uranus. I just finished narrating the, the book of air part on Uranus. Uranus takes 84 years to go all the way around the chart. So when we are 21, 42, 63, and 84, those are key Uranian transit times. Square, opposition, square, conjunction. Well, when these planets move through these key locations through the timeline of our life, it gives us opportunities to work out the themes of those planets. Now, that's a completely separate study. Certainly not anything that we can drill down or elaborate on here. But I just wanted to make you aware of it. These are things to add to your astrological vocabulary. Very important to our life, our soul journey as well, is to be aware of these things. I was doing a reading yesterday, and we talked about this very thing related to Uranus. Uranus was quite prominent in her chart at this time. And she had just been through the Uranus opposition at uh, around age 42, 43. And right on time, Uranus uh, presented some things in her life unexpected. Well, the thing that Steve Forrest mentions at the very last chapter of the Book of Air, it is beautiful, it brought tears to my eyes literally, is as he was describing the Uranus return and mentioned that if we live to 84, then we have seen in our life all of the key Uranian transit points. And we will have had an opportunity over the course of our lifetime to bring these themes of Uranian individuation, us becoming truly ourselves in a full, free, uninhibited way. Beautiful analogy. Oh, just incredible. Well, then as I was thinking about this, that happens on an annual basis as well. And that's kind of what we're looking at right now in some ways. So, for example, the sun squaring Neptune twice a year as the sun makes its way around the astrological circle. It squares Neptune. One time around it is in opposition and another time it is conjunct. So not only do we have these themes building in over the course of the 
decades of our life, we also have them happening on a more mini or micro basis throughout the year. So this is a really great time to focus on that Sun-Neptune work that we can be doing. And that is that Libran paradox <laughs> between confusion on one side of the scale and intuition on the other side of the scale. And as Libra brings us to want to balance things, you can look at that and say, which side of the scale are we on? All right, I'm going to leave it there for today. We have... Another thing that I'd like to talk about tomorrow that uh, we didn't get to, I thought we would get to it today, and it just took a little bit longer to do that. But we're going to talk about something that has not gotten fair billing in astrology, nor on this podcast. So we're going to fix that and talk about the asteroid belt planet Eris and an upcoming square with Pluto. That will be tomorrow on the Fun Astrology Podcast. But for now, let's live today fully under this sun-squaring Neptune. Figure out where you are on the scale between confusion and intuition. Have a good one. Bye-bye.